Justine McNally speaking here from Northwest Local Land Services. I've got Sean Slattery with me, my fellow DV, but down at Narrabri. I'm up at um, Moree, obviously. And um, we're just going to run these very, very quick um, webinars um, over the next couple of months in relationship to sheep health, uh, mainly based around west of the Newell. So our first presentation today is going to be by Sean, and it's really about um, trying to manage worms over the summer. So Sean's just going to give you a short, short, sharp uh, introduction to what we're meant to be doing over the next really probably four to five months. Um, our next webinar after this one will be held next Friday, same time, so that's the 17th, and it's just going to be around landmarking and the absolute basics around uh, landmarking. So I'm just going to hand over to Sean to get things underway. So I'll sign off and hopefully you guys can see Sean there. Okay, thank you. And uh, we're recording this for anyone who misses uh, this recording. And Justine, I'm just checking you've got the recording going there. Yeah, I do. I do. Right out. Okay, as promised, this is only going to take uh, uh, 20 minutes. And uh, I'd just like to firstly start the day by uh, acknowledging that they were speaking today from the traditional lands of the Camilleroy people. I'm just having a few problems here trying to get uh, the slide to go forward. Bear with me. Okay, so the idea is this is this is a, a spring sheep worms briefing, uh, in particular for the areas of the Walgut, Narrabri, Moree local government areas west of the Newell Highway. Uh, we do see different conditions in this part of the world compared to areas further south west and east, and uh, there's definitely a gap in giving advice on this area. Okay, these are the six takeaway measures which I'd like people to have a look at for this year. Uh, the steps we require for um, sheep worm control in the coming spring and summer is a multiple action or a multi action drench to all sheep now to early October. Uh, a multi action drench to all sheep again at the height of summer. That's a once off thing for this year, which I'll explain later. Uh, if we're weaning in the spring, give a multi action drench to the weaners then. We need to check that the drenches we're using are working. So we need to do a worm egg count 10 to 14 days after that September to October drench. We need to check that we've got things under control by monthly monitoring with worm egg counts, and critically for quarantine, drenching of all sheep that we introduce uh, with Zolvix or StarTech. Okay, a couple of avisos here. This briefing is broad recommendations only. If required, please seek individual advice. It's also for the circumstances for this year only. And look, there are plenty of other measures you can apply to um, for parasite control. Um, the Worm Vice website is, uh, is a good source or seek individual advice. This is a briefing, so it's in the format that we normally see in uh, emergency response situations. Uh, not that it's quite an emergency, but I'll explain the situation. What our mission is to uh, manage that situation, the steps we require to execute to achieve the mission, and then a few administrative notes. What is the situation? We have very high numbers of barbus pole worms in our sheep that have overwintered. I have never seen barbus pole deaths go so deep into winter um, or into early spring, in fact, as I have in this year, and that's over 30 years. We currently have high scale worm numbers in our, in our young sheep. Uh, this is about a one in 10 year event. Last time was the, uh, the winter and spring of 20, 2010. But one thing we really are facing this year, this is the first year where we have widespread um, mecton drench resistance to barbus pole and we have a good worm challenge. So, barbus pole worms in the sheep at the moment. We have a one in 30 year 
replacement then. This is worse than the end of uh, winter 2010. Uh, and remembering over 2010, 11, there was over 30,000 sheep died in the Walgett Shire alone from some survey work. So we could be in problems. Okay, these high numbers of barbus pole in the sheep at the moment will lead to uh, pasture contamination. Once temperatures increase, the level where eggs can hatch. Currently, we have low barbers pole larvae pasture contamination because they have been unable to hatch for the last three to four months since it got cool. The larvae that were deposited in autumn are just about run out of puff, out of energy. And so, this is the time of the year where the greatest percentage of the worm population exists in adults and sheep where we can actually attack them. So, a drench now kills a high percentage of the worms and an effective drench. Now, we all know that if we get heavy spring pasture contamination, that leads to a cycle of increasing barbers pole worms in the sheep, more pasture contamination, etc. etc. See deaths, production losses. But perhaps one of the greatest losses we do see is emergency and repeated drenching. And look, if you only drench when you see signs, which we see in the new year and autumn, then it's all too late because we have that heavy pasture contamination. And the steps today are try to avoid that situation. Okay, in terms of the high scale worms in young sheep, again, it's a one in 10 year event. We currently have heavy pasture contamination with uh, the black scale worms and some of the small brown stomach worms, which was a very unusual thing we're seeing. Okay, that's because those larvae can hatch over the cool conditions of winter, or those eggs can hatch and turn into larvae. So we will continue to see production losses in young sheep until we get hot weather and larval survival is short. Once it gets to about 35, this disappears as a problem and also as the sheep get older. However, we also have the potential, if we don't look at it, for a large number of these scale worms to overwinter, or sorry, over summer within the sheep. That means we'll suddenly get high pasture contamination in autumn next year, and we will have scale worm burns in the winter of next year. So we're looking forward some 12 months. Okay, in terms of the situation of mectin drench resistant to barbers pole now, now widespread, We've investigated a number of barbers pole crashes this year, which are linked to the use of either mectin alone drenches or mectin stroke clacental drenches. Uh, there's also been a number of people who've been doing post drenching worm egg counts, and we've found that uh, again, the mectin drenches aren't working by themselves against barbers pole. Uh, as I said, this is not probably something that's been sudden. It's probably been building for a decade, a decade of introducing uh, sheep from other areas where this sort of resistance is widespread. Uh, but this is the first year where we're gonna have a high worm challenge with mectin resistance not uh, being a factor. Uh, where do we go to next? Uh, triple active drenches, uh, that's the next group we're going to go to, those are the few drenches. Resistance to them is rare but emerging. I have three flocks in our area that have that there. So please don't say it's not on my place, cause it could be. Okay, so what is our mission? Threefold. First of all, to reduce that spring rise in bulbous pole pasture contamination. If we can slow it to the very hot weather of December and January, that really makes a huge difference to the number of drenches we require and eliminates emergency drenches. We need to reduce scale worm production losses in our young, young sheep spring, and we need to get rid of those oversummering worms. And we need to slow the development of drench resistance. Okay, what do we do to do that? In terms of reducing the spring rise in the barbers pole pasture contamination, we need to give it an effective drench to all sheep from now until early October. From about now on is ideal. Um, please um, don't make uh, make um, you know perfect the enemy of the good. 
time it, with uh, marking and all those sort of things around that time, but get an effective drench into all sheep. Uh, we need to monitor 10 to 14 days after that drench to make sure it was effective. And we need to monitor uh, monthly with worm egg counts from now until at least the new year. That's what we need to do for Barber's Pole. What do we mean by an effective drench? Q drench or a triple active? Okay, they've all got try in their name. Do your egg counts. I keep saying that again after that September, October drench. People will be asking straight away, do I have to do lambs at marking? No. Lambs that are predominantly milk drinkers do not have an intestine that's suitable for worms to establish. However, once they become pasture eaters, which is around that uh, 10 to 12 weeks of age, they can become very wormy. So if you're marking later or got some older lambs, if they look like pasture eaters, please drench them. But your usual lamb at your usual marking of that under seven weeks doesn't need a drench. Okay, what do we mean by effective monthly monitoring with worm egg counts? Uh, look, the test you must ask for is worm typing and individual counts. They cost a tad more, but look, if you're going to do it, let's do it properly. Uh, sometimes I have advised people to do pool counts, but that's an individual thing. But the general adv advice is worm typing and individual counts. You need to do enough tests so you've got a rep representative sample of what's going on in your flock. So look at doing one or two of the highest risk mobs, the young mobs. There are some people who have just decided to take a test of all mobs. I'll leave the choice with you. Please don't mix different mobs or lambs and ewes in your same, um, same kit. There's 10 tubes there. If you want to do more than one mob, please use two lots of kits. Um, and if you're looking at what the lambs have in the ewes, you can tell the dung, the difference in their dung on the ground. Please always go for whichever group you want to uh, monitor. And look, we may be able to uh, reduce the frequency of this, uh, this testing in the new year. Okay, what do we need to reduce scow worms? Um, look, it's the good news is, it's as for Barber's pole, Plus, we need to give an effective drench at weaning, if weaning between here and the end of the year. But the other thing, and this is a once, hour, uh, once in 10 year recommendation, we need to make sure that number of scale worms, black scale worm and small brown stomach worm, that over summer is reduced. And that's an effective triple action drench or pure drench of all sheep at the height of summer. Because at the height of summer, uh, the opposite to Barber's pole, these worms, uh, the whole worm population is effectively in the sheep. There's very few larvae on pasture, and so that's when we can kill them. Okay. Okay. Now, what should we do to slow the developing development of drench resistance? We don't want to be in a situation where we've only got um, uh, Zolvix or StarTech left. Uh, we want to be able to keep using these model action drenches. So the first thing we do is we've got to go away from using single or dual action drenches, use multiple action drenches, the triple action drenches or Q-drench. These are the ones that have got a Mactin, a Levermazole and a VZ in it, plus Clacentol Q-drench. Um, the advice has moved on from using rotations in terms of how long it'll take you to develop resistance. Multi-actives has been the advice now for several years rather than rotations. The other thing we must do is we must annually monitor to see whether we've got drench resistance. So if you're in a situation where you know there are worms in the sheep and we have that, monitor them 10 to 14 days later to see what's come through. If you want to be perfect, uh, do, do a sample at the time of drenching and then 10 to 14 days later, uh, but at the very least do the 10 to 14 days later drench. And critically, and this is probably one of the more important, the most important thing in terms of uh, drench resistance, quarantine drench all introductions with Zolvix or StarTech. 
The reason why I've got all there is to include rams. Uh, rams often come from uh, either high rainfall environments or enterprises that trench at a large number of times per year. Okay, putting that all together, six steps. Okay, we do a triple Q drench from now to early October. We do the same again to all sheep at the height of summer. We give those multi action drenches to, the, uh, to any weaning in spring or any weaners that we wean between spring and summer. We check that our drench has worked in September, October. We do monthly monitors from that trench and we quarantine drench with StarTech or Zolvix. Look, just some things on administration. We'll cover multiple action drenches, uh, monitoring for worm egg counts and advice on worm egg counts. Uh, what do we mean by multiple action drenches? Look, it's the triple active, active drenches uh, plus Clacenta, Mectinitol, Levamazole, Benzimidols. Uh, there's many products out there. Uh, many of them have uh, the try in the title um, or a play on triple. Uh, there are generics. Um, and once again, as I said, the, the advice now is multi-actives is better than rotations. Single actives will not work and they will only increase resistance. Uh, just some tips, admin, on uh, monitoring worm egg counts. Do not refrigerate the samples. Uh, you do that and you will generally kill the barber's pole larvae or barber's pole eggs in there or they won't hatch. Um, so it's critical, just at pantry temperature. Worm type plus individual counts, okay? All labs are accredited. So where you get your sampling down, look, they're equally as good. Uh, Often it's the, um, the time for the post to get there. Look at the cost, look at the convenience, that may be where the kits are. In terms of kits, uh, local land services do stock them. Uh, call the district veterinarian in lockdown for those of us who are still there. Um, but also give us a call. Um, just the other day, someone called me and I said, look, I'll be going past your mailbox later today. I'll drop some in or we can drop them in a in a town near to you, uh, please give us a call. Many resellers are also stocking these kits uh, and the labs themselves will send you out kits. Okay, uh, just in actual collection for those who have done it, uh, haven't done it before, it's quite simple. You have 10 tubes, uh, a glove, and you just pick the samples up freshly from sheep camps or yards. It's, it's a fairly simple process. Um, look, and just getting some advice on the worm egg counts, whether you need to drench, uh, you know, monitor closely or what you need to drench. Uh, look, use a district veterinarian or your advisor of choice. List that veterinarian or advisor on the specimen advice. When you receive the EMR with your results or interim results, um, please forward to your district veterinarian or advisor. Uh, speaking on just on my behalf, uh, all our lab results go into one big folder which we share with the other district veterinarians in our region. And so it's got a lot of lab reports in there. Uh, your lab report may not jump out at us or we may not check it or we may check sort on our name and miss it. So please send any emails or any reports you get, forward them onto us straight away to our personal emails. We will then call you and look in preparation of this call and perhaps even include in the email, can you like, put down what the class and history of these animals are? Are they the highest risk and representative of your flock? Uh, what is your drench resistance status? You may say, Sean, you did this two months ago, but I did that on four or five other people's places. I can't quite remember previous counts. Um, and look, what was the previous advice and actions? I had had the embarrassing uh, moment the other day when someone was speaking to me and said, look, can't you remember your, our advice of last week? And I said, no, because I've spoken to seven other people about worms since. So um, if you can assist us, we have this in our files and our notebooks, but it would just make the process run a bit quicker. So to finish up, this is the takeaway and we'll go through slowly 
Okay, triple action or queue drench to all sheep now till early October. Same again with uh, in the height of summer. Triple action Q drench or Q drench to all weaners that you in spring. Okay, out weaning. Monitor the effectiveness of the September October drench. Okay, and after you've done that September October drench, do monthly monitoring with worm end counts and quarantine drench all sheep with Zolvix or Startec. Okay, I'll now hand back to uh, Justine. I don't know how we're going in regards to time. I do need to unmute, sorry. Um, no, that's fine, Sean, that's right on the money because we started a couple of minutes late. For those who need to exit left field, go forth, but um, Sean and I are happy to stick around for another um, 10 minutes to, um, to field questions. And I've got a couple of questions that have just popped up. And the first one we've got was that on Worm Boss, they recommend in the quarantine drench um, to have four broad spectrum actors with Zolvix and Tridectin used concurrently. But Sean, I'd imagine that's because there's been a couple of reports in more recent times of they're quite isolated, but a little bit of resistance sitting around um, Zolvix on a couple of places. And that might be why Worm Boss is saying like the absolute gold standard would be that plus a tridectin. But Look, that, that comes back to my comment about uh, never let um, perfect be the enemy of the good. If you want to do the absolutely perfect, yes, you drench all sheep with all actives you possibly can get your hands on, which would be Zolvix plus StarTech plus triple action, plus Clesantol, uh, which would involve three three trips down the race. Uh, but look, uh, at the very least, please hit them with Zolvix or StarTech. And look, if you've got a small number of rams, do them with, uh, go down the race again with a triple action. Yeah, cool. Um, I've just got a couple of other little ones here. Um, there were two parts to this question, but from one person. So can cattle contaminate sheep with worms or vice versa um, and also can goats be contaminating sheep and I would suggest yes you can get issues across both but Sean what are, what's your opinion on that? No the cattle you can't even though you can get some homonchus in, in cattle the, the homonchus in cattle comes from the coast and it's uh, homonchus placei uh, I think once I've seen that come across to sheep, so it's so rare that you don't worry about it, and that's the general advice. It, don't worry about the one in a thousand events, let's just do what we normally do. In terms of uh, sheep and goats, yes, their parasites do contaminate with each other, but goats in terms of uh, their worms are a very different creature, and um, I, yeah, look, that's that's a totally different topic and I'd suggest you seek individual advice because while they have the same worms, uh, their browsing habits and the susceptibility makes them very difficult, different. Uh, so this advice doesn't apply for goats. Yeah, and then we've just got one here about problems with rotations. Why, why not just rotate through all these, all the different actives and, and go for a, a broad spectrum? Uh, look, the modelers have said that if you use multiple action at once, uh, that will slow the development of, of resistance. Uh, so that's the first thing. So that if you use uh, a mectin one year, then a lebemazole the next year, and a BZ the next year, and did that for however long, that is going to end up with resistance quicker than using them all together at the same time. The other reality is that at the moment, it would be a rare farm where uh, white drenches, your BZ, is working. Uh, as I said, if you're just using a mectin drench, uh, you know, I, I, my gut feeling is two thirds to three quarters of places have some barber's pole resistance out there, if not, if not more. Uh, in terms of levamazole, it will not be working against your scour worms. Uh, and I'm starting to see uh, problems with that with with your barber's pole. 
So the single drenches by themselves aren't working anyway. So we do need to go to either a Q drench or a triple action drench to um, to kill them. So yeah, uh, please go there. Yeah. No, that's fine. And then um, in relation to the rotation of pastures, um, what you know, are there issues around just rotating pastures to keep on top of worm burdens? But I would say, no, that's part of an integrated program and, and probably depends on people's setup a little bit, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's right. And that's where you get into more more individual advice. And I, I would definitely say that the more you move pasture rotations for Barber's Pole, the less, less worms you get. Uh, not so much with the scale worms because it depends on time of year. And it's this is a real individual um, advice thing. Uh, and that's where we're getting to. Um, sometimes the rotation lengths might be so short that they don't make any difference. Sometimes they may be so long that they don't make any difference. Uh, but look, if anyone's yeah. asking about what they need to do with pasture rotation, please seek individual advice. Especially if you've got a small flock, it is a thing that will make a lot of difference. Yeah, and then what would your idea be? So there's been a little bit of change around this, hasn't there, over the last probably five years, but um, moving sheep um, onto a fresh pasture after drenching because the um, that whole thing of drenching and then putting them straight onto a fresh pasture sort of got put out a little bit um, because you, you can be actively selecting for the most resistant worms and then the only eggs onto a, a clean pasture of resistant worms so um yeah I, I always find this one a little bit of a challenge myself actually saying how long you should either just have them in that holding paddock near the yards after drenching or put them back where they came from and then moving them on within a day or two so they it sort of seems counterintuitive but it's basically to do with trying to reduce the build-up of resistant genetics, isn't it? That's right. So this came from um, WA where they, they learnt this summer drench where they, they drench and put animals out onto essentially worm-free pastures that they're very quickly selecting, uh, you know, the entire population to be resistant to ant antibiotics. Um, what I generally say to people is that as long as you don't do it on all your sheep, which is what we generally don't do in our environment, uh, it's fine. So if you've got young sheep that are growing and you're drenching them to put onto a crop, that's okay because you've also got all this larvae going around in your adult sheep, sheep behind you. Uh, over summer in our environment, because we've got so many barbers, pollen, pasture, it's generally not going to be, be an issue. But again, that's a, that's a real question for individual circumstances and it's a, it's a difficult thing where you can't make a, a rule of thumb. Uh, generally, if it's for young growing stock going on the crop, yes. Uh, but if you were to do it for all your animals, uh, you could end up with issues. Yeah. Um, just a couple of ones to end up on. Um, this was Sean. Should we do tests before this first summer drench that we're about to do now for the, you know, sort of late September, early October? or just gen drenched regardless. But um, I, my thing would be if you, if you could test, do. If for some reason it just doesn't happen, don't, don't panic. Yeah, no. um, this, this first one is um, drenched regardless because we've just, we've got them out there, out there everywhere. Um, the only reason you'd want, you would perhaps look at doing a test at, at drenching is to see what sort of counts, what sort of counts you've got. Um, it's a long time since we've seen any zero counts, yeah. counts around. Um, so yeah, this is specific for this yeah. year. I, I have to, yeah, yeah. It is a it is a bit uncommon to see a zero count, but actually the next next question is from someone that I do know how to zero count, and um, and just saying um, some of our worm tests showed we had zero worms, and we're about to start lambing. Should we have drenched? But the they, I know this chap does a lot of worm tests, so they're, they're very on the ball with where they're up to. And I'd say, no, I'd just be lambing. And then I'd be looking at testing those ewes during this yeah, next so sort of 
be six weeks and then they might need drenching come landmarking. But um, yeah. but that's an unusual. Unusual thing. And this gets back to this decision of if you really want to give individual advice, um, talk to Justine, myself, or uh, your advisor. Um, it's a bit like medical advice, but these are the general things to be uh, going at. Um, if it was myself, unless I'd been monitoring steadily every month, I'd just be getting in and drenching them. Yeah, and I think that's the key, isn't it? Like if if you're a regular um, worm egg, you know, um, counter, I suppose, you know, you, you've got a bit, bit better picture over your 12 month period of what's going on. So the only zero counts I've actually seen come in are people that are, are very regular testers. So they've, they've had probably more key drenches in that winter period when we were having pressure that a lot of people didn't notice was happening. But I'd say, what what do you think? 95% of the worm tests coming through now show pretty reasonable counts for this time of the year. And I, if I hadn't tested, I'd be drenching in the next... Yeah. And I wouldn't be confident that you've got a mob in there that doesn't have high counts either. So, yeah. 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 If they're coming to the yard between now and October, please drench them. Yeah. So, guys, it's uh, four past one. So, we're going to call it quits because we said we'd try and keep it pretty short and brief. Thanks for coming on. And sorry I forgot to do the housekeeping notes like how to put a question in, but you can try it for next time. But um, hopefully we see a few of you on next Friday and then we won't have a webinar probably for a few weeks, but we were just trying to hit key um, management um, practices and so we felt drenching was one and for those that have lambed out already, landmarking's probably a, a, your next big management um, procedure you're going to have and a few people are lambing currently that, that will tie in for them but it, the landmarking stuff is just you know really like the bare basics of what you should try and tick off on but thanks so much for attending and Sean thanks for a great presentation and beautiful photo at the end and um, everyone have a lovely weekend and for those that are getting out of lockdown take it easy and don't go wild and those like Sean and everyone else in Walgett sorry that you're still in it but I hope you get out of lockdown soon. Great. Thank you and see everyone later. Thanks everyone.